here we go. This is Mike Lodge, and it is a Wednesday. And what's going to happen today? The feds are going to announce how much interest they're going to start charging. So it could go up 50%, or it could go up one point, one full point. But we're waiting to see. And that's going to change a whole bunch of different scenarios for our economy. But we're waiting to see what they do. They're supposed to have a meeting and announcement today. We'll see what happens. I'll come back and let you know my views on that tomorrow. Just to kind of give you a heads up of what may happen. Listen, you know, I've been trying to plan a vacation to go out to the West Coast to see my my friends and to just relax and away from all of this nonsense. And so I thought, okay, well, how am I going to get there? That's the best cost-effective way. And I tell you, I'm having a, a, a little bit of a problem here. I thought, okay, you know what would be fun is to do the Zephyr train that goes from Chicago to San Francisco or Los Angeles. So I priced that, thinking it was going to be much cheaper than flying. But it's not. It's $1,500. So I, I'm at the point where, okay, I can't do the train. Because what my, my point was during the summer is that I have 28 states that I need to visit. And then I will have visited all of the United States. So I have 28 to go. So I thought, okay, if I took the train, I would hit some of those states along the way. However, at $1,500, I don't think I'm going to do that. Then I said, okay, how about driving? Well, gas prices are at 5 bucks. How much does it cost to, to fill up a car? Then over $100. So I thought, no, nah, I won't be doing that either because driving across, that's 3,000 miles, and you have to fill up a lot. That's going to be... That's going to be more than a plane ticket. Then I thought, okay, let me start checking around on the plane. So I went to Expedia, and I went from South Carolina to Los Angeles, and that was $1,200. Then it dropped down to $900. Now, someone suggested a new website for me to go to, so I'm going to try that today and see what they come down. It's supposed to be much cheaper. Now, I've tried cheap tickets. I've tried Expedia. Um, well, I tried another one. I can't remember what it is. But then they said, try this one because it will get you down to a much, much lower dollar amount. I think the – let me look and see what the name of that site is. And you guys tell me whether or not if this is true or not. Let me see if I can find it here. Shoot, I don't have it anymore. I don't have it on my on my cell phone. I thought I had it. Shoot, I'm going to have to do research in that now and find out what it was. But they said that's the cheapest play to go, place to go. I saw I saw someone post that on the on the web website. I'll I'll when I find it, I'll post it in the body of my text below. Okay. But if you look at the price of flying, it has tremendously gone up. If you look at the consumer price index for that, it has like. I mean, if you could jump the highest, it probably has been gone up the highest. It has shot up 25%. So the consumer price index for airline tickets has shot up by 25%, which is the largest jump since the Federal Reserve of St. Louis began tracking the index in 1989. In April alone, airfare spiked 18.6%, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Average cost of a good deal Round trip domestic flight for June is at three hundred and ninety eight dollars. Let me tell you, from here to from here to to Los Angeles for me it's much more than three hundred and ninety eight dollars. I don't know where these people are going. But they're saying that that was over a hundred dollar more than the same month average in two hundred uh in twenty twenty one. So we have a transportation problem where fuel costs have jumped up significantly, train fares have jumped up significantly, air fares have jumped up significantly. So how in the world do we travel? Maybe by kite or by some other way. I don't know. I'm not going to walk. That's a long walk. 3,000 miles to Los Angeles? I'd die.
<laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> but we need to talk more about this travel situation because people need to get going. They've been locked up for all of this time, for two years with this stupid pandemic, and now we can't travel because inflation is so high, we can't go anywhere. So we have a problem. I don't know what this world is coming to, but it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy out there. And speaking of of travel, you know the Internal Revenue Service came out with a new gas price. Uh, I mean, not the gas price, but the mileage deduction. And it has now risen to, I think it's 62, let me find it here, just one moment and I'll tell you. It's uh, 62.5 cents. Now, if you don't know what that mileage rate is, it's if you are in business... If you are self-employed, and if you are traveling, you're using your car to travel from client to client, you get that 62.5 mileage deduction on your federal income tax return. It's really important that people use that if you are doing that because it significantly cuts your tax burden. But they, they raise it up, and the reason why they did it is because of the inflationary prices of gasoline at the moment. So what the article says, basically, it says, IRS boosting mileage deduction as gas prices soar. It costs more to do your business now. So they raised the amount. Now, it wasn't very much. I think it was like three cents or something. But still, they've had to raise this because the price of gas is just consuming uh, uh, consuming our revenue. It's consuming our wages. It's consuming how we're living because it's so costly just to get to work anymore. Um, I I heard of one person that quit their job because it cost them more for gas than what they made during the day at their job. And this is going to be one of those things that pe- more people are going to going to think about. How are they going to use their car? What is the most feasible way for them to get to work and make money? And I heard one person said, listen, I've got to find a second job. Just to pay for my gas, I need to find a second job. Some may even have to find a third job, depending on what kind of car they drive. But it is important to note that we are in trouble. Now, as I've said so many times before, the president has a whole bunch of options on the table that he should be listening to, but he won't listen to it because he doesn't want to stray from his green political agenda. And I'm telling you right now, I cannot afford a fifty or $75,000 Tesla. I just cannot do it. My car is paid for. It runs on gas. It gets good gas mileage. I... Am debt free. Why in the world would I go into debt just to please a president who's trying to push a political agenda? I'm not going to do it. I'm debt free. I want to stay that way. Now, the other concern is that as the prices go up, so does the price on packaging of of products and and building plastics and everything else that goes into a car that goes up also because gasoline or 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 fuel is used petroleum is used to build other products <laughs> so we are we 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 have a president who needs to sit down and start thinking with his head instead of with his political agenda He has the ability to call in all of the oil production companies in America and sit down with them and say, okay, what do we need to do to get our production up and our costs lower? Because everything that he has put in place through his policies has increased the cost of production because refineries and drilling companies have so much red tape and permitting and all of this stuff that costs them hundreds of millions of dollars just to think about opening up a well. What can the president do 
He can sit down with these people and say, what can we do and eliminate so that we can get our production up? Instead of buying it from a foreign country that hates us, what can we do first in America? America first. I believe in that statement. America first. What can we do in America to increase our production? What can we do to talk about our, our problem of getting things from one place to the next? What can we do about that? What can we do with the trucking industry where truckers are starting to leave the industry because it's just too much money to fill their gas tanks and deliver stuff? What do they do? He has all of these options to listen to these people who know what to do to get more production and more fuel to the American people at lower costs. He has that ability, but he refuses to do it. Instead, he wants to fly off to Saudi Arabia and sit down with those people. And I got I, I have this sneaking feeling that they're going to say, go shove it, Biden. You have put us down. In fact, just a couple of days ago, he was calling the Saudi people the most irreparable people in the world. <laughs> so how can you ever negotiate if you're going to start calling people names? How, how are you ever going to get prices down if you keep blaming other people? We, he also has the ability to sit down with these production companies and see how much oil can be pumped down through the pipelines so that they can get to the refineries. And can't do, uh, the, the refineries that were shut down because of the Biden policies, how do we get them back up and running? Because now we're short refineries. So the president has a whole bunch of options on meeting the supply chain, getting that up and running, getting the production of oil up and running in the United States so that we're leading that again and that we're independent of any other country. His Green New Deal is going to have to wait because it's going to take a lot of time before Americans can even afford a $75,000 Tesla. So he has options, and there's so many options, but he needs to stop listening to the people in the White House because they are nonsense and start listening to the individuals who actually get the work done. If he doesn't start listening, he is going to drive the inflation numbers up. Now, we're going to have to wait and see what the Federal Reserve does with their interest rate hike. Or even if they're even going to do a hike. Maybe they'll get scared and not do one. But that's going to affect our money because it's going to raise interest rates on housing and everything else. So we have to be very careful how we manage our own money. Let's not be like the government and spend, spend, spend. Let's be like normal individuals in a calming, thoughtful process of how we use and spend our money. That's the way it should be. Listen, this is Mike Lodge, the business advisor. If you have any questions, send them to me at info at lodge-co.com. If you want to follow me, if you want to have more access to me, go to my website, which is www.lodge-co.com. And if you want to support my channel, go to www.buymeacoffee.com forward slash Michael Lodge. The links are down below. Now, listen, everybody. We're going to have some tough times in the next few months. This inflationary time, this recession is going to last for a while. As long as Biden is not going to listen to the American people and listen to really smart business people out there and only listen to his politicians that are surrounding him with nonsense, if he refuses to listen and, and consider the options on the table, this inflation is going to be here for the remainder of his term. This is Mike Lodge. I'll talk with you soon. Bye-bye.